First of all, welcome uh, to the second annual and hopefully one second of many answer symposia. And um, I'd like to first uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, I think we're going to have an enjoyable day with a lot of exciting talks uh, in a field that we know is not only important, but one in which is, which is uh, the research in this field is expanding and uh, is critical to our future. Um, my, ro my role right now is to introduce you to uh, our center and to tell you a little bit about the directions we're going um, and to um, offer some insights into uh, who we are and um, uh, our activities. The, um, the Answer Center is, was created a couple of years ago now. Um, let's see if I get this clicker to work right. Oops, wrong one. Oops, wrong. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'm happy to I'm happy to uh, announce to those of you who haven't heard, which is probably all of one, maybe one or two of you, that the the Answer Center has been designated as of about nine days ago a, a, an Energy Re Frontier Research Center by the Department of Energy. Which the, what this means is that an, the Answer Center is now uh, fully funded by DOE. And so as a consequence, uh, for the next five years, we will be able to move forward with uh, vigor and with uh, uh, significant advancement uh, toward meeting our goals to uh, developing new basic science approaches to um, solar energy. And as a consequence, um, uh, what I want to do is really tell you a little bit about the, the relationship and the, um, the, the activities that we have ongoing at this point. And so we all know what the problem is. We, we had heard a wonderful talk from Harry Gray last night about, about just how difficult this problem is and just how demanding uh, it's going to be for us to solve over the, over the next several years. Uh, this is just a summary of, of essentially the, the type of problem we have, and that is our needs are great. You can see that you know, we have a certain amount of energy utilization today, and with the uh, advent of uh, energy needs in the developing world, uh, this is going to double very quickly, and is, will, is projected to even triple by 2100. So dealing with this is very difficult, and it turns out that solar energy is really the only viable solution in the long term because of the capacity. The capacity is enormous globally, and if one simply looks at the land area of the U.S., we have more than enough land area, as Harry uh, uh, mentioned uh, explicitly last night. The environmental impact is, can be low, provided we choose the correct technologies and the correct approaches. And uh, in addition, uh, there's a security, a national security issue here as well. I mean, it can be geopolitically secure energy. In other words, energy made at home and uh, as a consequence uh, not really as uh, sensitive to other political issues. So those are the advantages and that's what we, what we would like to do. It turns out that uh, the relationship between Northwestern and Argonne is a long one in this field and in each uh, institution there have been many advances in the uh, development of molecular materials uh, for energy related uh, subjects. And so some of them are outlined here, but you can see that the, the portfolio of activities really centers around the kinds of materials that are critical for uh, developing new solar energy technology. Everything from transparent conducting oxides to uh, specific uh, interfacial control through, through self-assembly, through uh, organic electronics, um, to even biomimetic uh, processes for mimicking uh, key aspects of photosynthesis. And so, Northwestern has had a, a, a long history in developing this, this, this approach uh, uh, to new materials and to new science that are very relevant to solar energy research. Uh, by the same token, research at, at Argonne has been uh, focused for many years in the field of uh, photosynthesis and the mimicry of key aspects of photosynthesis with respect to solar energy. And this goes all the way back uh, more than 40 years to understanding the physical chemistry and the, and the uh, properties of uh, the uh, pigments in photosynthetic organisms like chlorophylls. Uh, it progresses to actually 
unraveling the uh, structure and mechanism of the proteins that uh, are key in, in uh, photosynthetic energy transduction, um, all the way to modeling uh, photosynthetic systems, and uh, very recently taking advantage of the uh, marvelous facilities at Argonne with regard to uh, structural information, for instance, the, uh, the advanced uh, photon source, to developing new structural tools to actually um, uh, unravel what's going on, not only in uh, the protein systems, but in, in uh, systems that are designed to uh, duplicate key aspects of, of the problem. So what is the answer center's vision? Well, the answer center's vision is, is simple and straightforward. Uh, we need to dramatically improve the conversion efficiency of solar light and heat to electricity and fuel. And we're going to do that in a number of ways, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, ba it's basic science, though. We need to achieve a new understanding of mechanisms. And last night, um, Harry told us about mechanisms in his talk. And Unless we understand the mechanisms in detail of how energy and light is transduced into charge, for instance, and how that charge is transported across interfaces, um, we will not be able to develop uh, appropriate technologies that take advantage uh, of, of a deeper understanding. Um, in order to do this, we need to design, synthesize, and, and self-assemble new nanoscale architectures in order to do this. And indeed, the, the, the self-assembly aspect is important because uh, nature uses this in many, many regards. And as a consequence, we need to be able to take advantage of sort of cutting to the chase on synthesis and trying to use molecular properties themselves in order to assemble new architectures. And a very, very important part of this is education because we're not the last generation that's going to solve this problem. Our students and postdocs and subsequent generations are going to need to address this problem and to solve many, many issues involving this complex, complex science. And our, our educational efforts and our efforts to, um, to familiarize uh, students and, and postdocs with, with this problem and the, the challenges involved is really a critical part of uh, our activities. Center facilities that we have at our disposal, as I mentioned, uh, we have the advanced photon source at Argonne, which is a, a marvelous structural tool which many of us use on a routine basis. And we also have the new Center for Nanoscale Materials, which, is com which has complementary facilities relative to the nanoscale facilities here at Northwestern, which are uh, to some degree housed in Ryan Hall, which uh, is uh, just a little bit uh, north of here. Uh, the center is currently comprised of 27 principal investigators, both at uh, uh, Northwestern and at Argonne, and at uh, uh, three other universities, um, Yale, uh, University of Illinois, and uh, University of Chicago. And so um, we have a broad base of expertise to, to bring to bear on these problems. The scientific challenges that we face and are addressing, as I uh, have alluded to, is to understand how to use artificial photosynthesis for producing solar fuels. And um, once again, Harry uh, gave a wonderful description last night of, of, this, of this field. Uh, in concert with this, we also want to understand how to make organic solar cells for cheap, cheap electricity. And once again, uh, organic materials will provide us with a, a significant departure for, from today's technology, hopefully a disruptive a new technology that will evolve over time. Um, we need to be able to understand how to use nanostructured materials to improve the efficiency of solar cells. And in this context, we have hybrid, hybrid organic inorganic systems which we are producing which uh, will uh, address the, this particular issue. And last but not least, um, an area that is frequently um, uh, not considered in the context of, uh, of, of conventional uh, photochemical driven systems, because it's not photochemistry, it's, it's essentially using the heat of the sun, is to develop new solid state materials for thermoelectrics. And this is, this is also a part of our act activities. Just very briefly, uh, the approach to solar fuels is essentially trying to understand not only what goes on in, in green plant photosystems, but also to produce artificial systems that will, in fact, uh, be able to be coupled with, with catalysts, such as this one, which is from Gary Brudbig's lab, uh, to, um, to actually generate the solar fuels 
in a direct uh, uh, utilization of the charges that are, that are produced uh, in the energy transduction step. The organic solar cells, as I mentioned, um, are important from the standpoint that one needs to be able to use cheap materials. The organic materials need to be robust. They also need to be self-ordering. In other words, we need to be able to design systems that have increasing amounts of order. Order is important in these systems simply because we know that in disordered organics, the efficiencies are modest at best, and it's certainly con uh, compared to single crystal silicon. And so the increasing the degree of order without working too hard is really uh, the name of the game. And by working too hard, I mean usually if you have to work very hard to make something, it's going to cost a lot of money. And so conceivably then is the, one needs to be able to uh, develop systems that, um, that uh, eliminate that, that additional uh, work in their, in their manufacture. The hybrid organic-inorganic systems are based on uh, concepts that were developed uh, years ago by Michael Gretzel with regard to diasensitized solar cells. But in point of fact, we've been stuck at a, a modest efficiency for a long time. And indeed, if we could boost that efficiency, it would be truly a game changer in this, in this uh, 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 system. And so we've been de designing um, and working on a variety of electrode structures, which in, for instance involve concentric ring architectures, which in fact uh, serve to uh, shorten the path length that charges have to flow in order to be able to move within the system. And so using sophisticated techniques uh, in collaboration with the, with the, the, group at Ar the groups at Argonne, especially groups uh, of Mike Pellin, um, we have embarked upon uh, an approach involving atomic layer deposition to try to develop these new materials. Last but not least is thermoelectrics, and indeed this is work that comes largely from Mercury Conocetus' lab at, at Northwestern. It's a very s simple idea, but it could have profound uh, impact in the sense that if one um, essentially has a material that looks a little bit like raisins in pudding, uh, those raisins can be nanostructures which in fact um, impede the flow of heat without impeding the flow of electricity, thereby increasing the figure of merit for thermoelectrics to a large degree and allowing us to go to much higher temperature materials where thermodynamics is really helping us in a great deal. By using that approach, uh, we can get much more efficient conversion of just focused sunlight into directly into electricity using this, this type of approach. So this is really the portfolio. And uh, if you'd like further information on this, we've established a very, a very uh, I believe, informative website. And this is where you can find it. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions as, during the day that you might have as, as, as they arise. And um, uh, with that, I will, I will stop and uh, we'll continue on with the program. Thank you.